Hello and welcome back. The disseminator has been running great for the last few days and today we'll be installing more RAM into it and changing out power supplies. I saw a little video that showed that having a more efficient power supply may actually reduce the amount of watts used. So today we're going to try and see if that actually makes a difference for me and my use case or not. So without further waiting, let's go ahead and jump right in. As you can see here, currently the router, modem, and switch are drawing 18 watts of power from the ups. We'll need to remember this number so that way when we turn on the server, we know just how much power is being drawn from the ups with the current power supply from Corsair that it has in it. Okay, I've just booted up the server. Once it gets into the operating system and all the services are started, we will then take the amount of watts it's using and use this to compare to the amount of watts it will be using later when we change out power supplies. Okay, while the server is getting settled, we're going to go ahead and unpackage some of these things in preparation for the installation of the new RAM, which is right here. It's some G-Scale. It's a 16 gigabytes or 8 gigabyte two sticks. Uh, that's the same exact one that I actually already own, but it was on sale on Newegg, so I go ahead and figure I'd pick up uh, some more RAM while it was cheap. And here's the new EVGA Supernova 650 watt platinum certified power supply. This thing is going to replace the old one that I currently have, and hopefully this thing uses less power to prove our results that platinum is in fact better than bronze. Yes, it's a little overkill for what I have, but it at least me room for expandability in the future, and it has a 10 year warranty, so if anything goes wrong, I can send it back to EVGA and hopefully they'll take care of me. Okay, now that the server has time to settle down, we can see that it's using 156 watts of power. Minus 18 watts that I was using earlier yields us about 138 watts of power being drawn from the ups. Now this number will fluctuate depending on the load, which I've seen as high as 165 watts, but right now, sitting idly with all the services running, it's at a comfortable 156 watts total between all of the devices. There's just something so nice about opening new hardware. Maybe it's the smell or the process. It's like it's like a little Christmas every single time. And I gotta tell you, I love opening EVJ products. They're all so well packaged and they actually feel feels like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Oh, that fresh power supply smell. Alright, so I've got a uh, UVJ little bag here, uh, some all the cables I need. I probably won't need any because everything's already installed. I should just have to switch out the power supplies and be done with it. And of course, the power supply itself, wrapped in a nice soft foam, which is beautiful to see. Uh, I guess a manual or something that tells you all the differences between the 650, the 750, and the 850. And this gorgeous pouch that they put this in. I mean, who does this, really? I know Corsair has something similar to this, which is really nice for their AX series, but I've never seen it done for anything else. The paint job on this is actually really beautiful, and it smells brand spanking new. Okay, now that we have the power supply installed, we're going to go ahead and boot up and see what happens. Okay, so we ran into one problem. Apparently you can't use Corsair SATA cables into the EVGA power supply, and you have to use the EVGA SATA cables in order to get power to the hard drive. Which makes sense, but I didn't really think they would be pinned so differently that you couldn't actually use them. So now, I'm testing to see if all the hard drives are getting power because I don't actually have enough SATA power to each of the hard drives. So I just booted up the operating system, and of course, the keyboard doesn't work, and neither of the mouse. So now things are pretty much getting worse as we go, and all I did was literally switch a power supply, which should be pretty simple. But I guess, like most things computers, it never is. Okay, so after spot checking to make sure everything's there, it looks like all the hard drives are actually getting power. And uh, I'm ready to shut this thing back down and get it put back upstairs and everything plugged back in and then everything started back up. And hopefully we don't have any more problems from then on out. So let's see what happens. Now the server is settled down, you can see that the EVGA power supplies actually helped reduce the power draw from the UPS to 120 watts. That is 138 minus 18 watts that the modem, router, and switch are using. So that leaves us with 120 watts that the server is actually using. And this is without the new RAM installed. So let's go ahead and install the new RAM and see if this number changes at all. Okay, so now with the RAM installed, we see that we've gone up six more watts from the total pool of the UPS. 
So that means the server is using 126 watts from the UPS. These are very interesting results as I didn't really think the RAM would have that much of an effect on the power consumption. But very interesting stuff. And I'm glad I added the new power supply because now it's using even less power than it was before. Okay, so we got 64 gigabytes of RAM installed and a new power supply. It's a pretty interesting result as well. I wasn't too sure that the power supply was actually going to have that big of an effect on the amount of watts that I was drawing from the ups, but it actually did. And I'm glad I made the move because that'll save me probably $50 in four years or something like that. And while that might sound insignificant, that is a lot of money in the long run that I might need for some more RAM or some other components in the future. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.